a very good afternoon to you. Uh, time for another request. I seem to be um, doing a number of these um, the dawn the other day, ditching my Leica MP. This is another one from Sergey. Um, Sergey, I think. Um, apologies if I've mispronunciated, mispronunciated that. Um, you know who you are anyway. Um, the question is, and I quote, um, maybe you make a video to give some tips and recommendations about making family photos with a rangefinder camera. Okay, good one, good one. Um, I have to say straight away, I don't know whether you mean your family or whether you're, whether it's for commissions for other people's families. Um, and if it's your family, how many kids and that kind of thing. Um, I will say straight off, make it your own. Um, yes, I can give tips and recommendations, but I will say straight away, I'm not any kind of master um, family photographer, <laughs> I wouldn't say. I just had a vested interest because I had a beautiful daughter. Um, and, you know, to give you some context, I'm my age. When I was a kid, there weren't many cameras about. It was quite a new thing, um, and it was probably quite expensive. Yes, there are some photos. My mother was particularly precious. She didn't want, you know, she wanted to keep them in an album, so I don't really have the photographs that, you know, I think I made copies of them once upon a time, but um, yeah, I don't really have any. So. As such, when I had my daughter, I was absolutely determined to produce something, um, produce a body of work that she could have forevermore. Um, now, from me, <laughs> almost no photographs, pendulum sort of went full, um, full distance it, it didn't really stop in the middle so yeah there are thousands of photographs as there probably are of most people's kids I don't know um, but I think the first thing I would say is have an end game what what do you want um, you know some people are more than happy to just take photographs on a digital camera and look at them on a the screen when I started taking photographs of my daughter and family photographs and that kind of thing. Um, digital was a new thing. So I waited a few years before it got up to speed and I thought it was any good. Um, but I guess for 12 years, that's the main age. Um, you know, after 12, then they're their own people. And, you know, I don't know. It's almost like, yeah, you, you're not taking family photos again. Um, uh, but I knew that I wanted to produce these photographs. And I'm not going to show you these photographs, but there's a absolute wad of A4 hand printed photographs by me I knew I wanted photographs I didn't I wasn't content you know I was thinking okay digital's coming out that's all great it all looks lovely on the screen however when she's 18 I don't know what technology is going to do um, or be and how access you know I I just for whatever reason knew I wanted hard copy prints, hand printed. Um, there are two, you know, I've got to, if I can pick them up, they're heavy. Um, yeah, two two boxes, uh, yeah. And I've got many, many more, but this is the, the creme to the creme, and those are hers forevermore when she wants them. Um, I, you know, if it's for you, if it's your family, Sergey, then um, I did two copies, probably three in some cases, 
more than that in other cases. Um, I'm just gonna put these over here. Maybe a bit more space. Um, so that, you know, she would have a copy. I would also have a, co uh, a copy. Um, and yeah, it kind of made it a lot cheaper because I printed it myself. I could control all the values and that kind of thing. Now, I said some people want to just see it on a screen. Some people want 50 photographs dotted up around the house, put in frames, whatever, you know? Um, I don't know your setup, so without you being or giving me more information, I can't be more, my answer can't be more specific, I'm afraid. Um, <coughs> but <coughs> know what you want. <coughs> Think about what technology might be. You know, do you want prints? Do you, you know, how good are you at making sure that you don't lose files, archiving stuff, and all that kind of thing? Now, I'm a black and white shooter. Um, film, you know, I'm on record. Um, I had to think, although I own these photographs, they're my photographs, they sensibly are for my daughter. Um, yeah, and, and me, but for my daughter, they're, they're what I want to give her. Um, so I had to kind of think, you know, does she want a thousand photographs in black and white or colour? And that was a dilemma for me, but I made the conscious decision. I'm going to, although I'm a black and white shooter, and I love black and white. I am going to shoot the majority of time in colour. Um, I can then desaturate. And so I would say, you know, if there are, I don't know how many photographs there are, but let's say Let's say there's a thousand. I think 50 of them are black and white. Ones that I thought were just beautiful black and white. But there are also colour versions of them. So I've kind of doubled up. I've, I've covered myself in that sense. I've, you know, backed up and, yeah. Um, but I would always say make duplicates. I have actually made some even larger prints of her um, at times. Um, not, you know, not many, but a few um, 12 sixteens um, so yeah you've got to make some decisions um, you know range find a camera or not you've got to make you've got to make decisions for when they're 18 or whatever again I don't know whether the, whether it's your family or not so if it's for another for you know if you want to make money out of commissions photographing other kids I you know I, I don't know it's difficult I can just say what I've done and maybe you can adapt it accordingly um, now you know these photographs start off if I open the box there's one where you know the first photograph is when she's a few minutes old wrapped in a sheet and just and then it's the progression throughout that 12 years. Now, I didn't just shoot rangefinder. Most of it is done on a, on a, a Leica, um, a Leica M7, actually, that I had back then. Most of them are on a 50 Summicron lens. Um, I think the rangefinder is fantastic for this because you you have that clear window all the time. You're not looking through the lens, in other words. See, you see everything beautifully, crystal clear, lovely big, you know, viewfinder, and it's great for, you know, the key thing for me was, um, yes, I took some with Hasselblad, but those are the more contrived ones. I think my whole stance was, I want the spontaneity that only children have, that just wonderful thing that, you know, is utterly, utterly special and unique. Um, and so, yeah, I, I felt the rangefinder was brilliant for that kind of thing. I, I'm not saying I, you know, uh, wouldn't shoot on SLR. I did shoot on SLR 
sometimes. Um, just because that was the camera that had film in or something, or I was finishing off a film or whatever. I don't know. But um, the rangefinder was brilliant. I think, again, out of a thousand photographs, probably 800 are on the M7 and probably 50 are on the uh, on my Nikon F3 and the remainder were probably Hasselblad as I say for for more sort of formal setups uh, there's no right or wrong you can make them all formal um, I just think with kids it's it's a you know if you can capture that essence it is you know that's that's what's magical at least that's that was my thinking um, now I'm about six foot one and certainly when she's a toddler you know I've got photographs of her taking her first steps um, literally I knew she was about to walk <laughs> I knew it so the camera was with me constantly every time I got back from work sat on the sofa or whatever the camera was right beside me I was just primed for that you know I knew it was about to happen um, but one of the golden rules for me anyway because I'm six foot one I always felt it was import important I mean not always but the majority of the time was to get on to their level so I'd crouch down on my knees I'd sit down I'd, you know I'd be kind of eye level and not just being adult looking down because that almost looks a bit not condescending but you know it, it's just nice being on their level and you know being in their world and having that equilibrium or whatever you want to call it um, now you know I can't give you I can't recommend what you photograph you know for me key moments just having a camera with you all the time um, I've got photographs of her as a baby sleeping roller skating around the block me <laughs> trying to keep up with her um, uh, just you know trying on mummy's shoes when she's a toddler you know I remember doing that as a kid I tried on my dad's shoes <laughs> they're like boats you know your childhood is probably quite similar to theirs or there are parallels and so you just kind of use that in a way I mean not in a conscious way I mean I've got ones of I think this is on other vlogs I've done in Paris and then moments later we're at the Eiffel Tower so I steal something for myself um, I think we were you know I put the camera down on the floor and sort of looked over with her down under the camera right underneath the Eiffel Tower so you got you know you do some cliche stuff there's nothing wrong with cliche just keep shooting I shot Polaroids I you know it, it didn't matter it was just capturing that essence capturing that you know I, I do it a little bit now in street photographs I mean I know it's really important to you know keep yourself above reasonable doubt in this day and age it absolutely is but I've got some beautiful f photographs of mother and daughter just playing you know that pat cake thing that they do um, just lovely innocent and sort of you know just beautiful little moments and I don't do it sneakily or anything the mother sees me and she smiles and I can weigh it up if, you know if she's looking you know eyes on stalks or something then I stay well away you know but I announce myself I don't hide behind corners or do anything weird or stuff and I you know I, I honestly can't even think of the last time somebody didn't look conducive didn't look perfectly happy um, it's about being open it's about being honest and it's about having integrity you know 
knowing full well if she says oh can I see that you're more than willing to show it and if she wants a copy you make sure you send a copy anyway I diverge this isn't about family stuff um, but yeah I mean holidays is a wonderful wonderful time obviously because they're just in their element and they're meeting friends and you know they have stages I think up to about four or five it was just a breeze and a dream and then they start sticking their tongue out <laughs> playing up to the camera a little bit um, and yeah you know you've just got to take it as is and, that, and those are the stages some are more you know troublesome than others um, as I say up to the age of about I, I can't even remember I think it was about four or five before they start sticking their tongue out or making weird faces you know but even those those are beautiful that's part of that's part of her being seven and eight or whatever age it is they do it um but just go with it and have fun and i mean i did it practically all with a with a 50 mil lens um there are some exceptions but it's practically all with a 50 mil um, and I just love the ability to have some nice okay some nice depth of field sometimes um, which you can get with a 50 I would argue that it's probably easier to do with a 35 not much wider than that otherwise you just get all that distortion stuff or they look too distant or I don't know you know I mean nothing wrong with it if that's what you deem your aesthetic to be that that's what you want but for me personally I you know I wouldn't have shot anything wider than a 35 um, now my my then wife was you know she wasn't a photographer but she had an uncanny ability I bought her a Pentax camera once for her birthday and or for Christmas or something I can't remember um, but it was a what I would call a a very good amateur camera um, it was a Pentax had a 35 to 70 lens on and she just had the ability to take some wonderful little portraits all very very similar I think set at 50 because there'd always be some quite a bit of fall off but not not fully extended near no, not at, not at 70 around about the 50 and she would just sort of always be the same distance and I would remember her smiling and then and she would just get a lovely angle or a lovely expression and and so that would work some of those photographs are in here those some of those I printed up um, you know and she could sort of do what I wouldn't do or couldn't see and so you know it can be very complimentary to have to have that as well you know um, it's not about you know trying to make gone with the wind or anything like that it's about anticipation I think it's about having some fun not being too serious but ultimately <clears throat> knowing where you want those images to end up now I did do some on Hasselblad with a with a with a, a light box. Um, I would argue that um, you know for such occasions it's really good just to do some indoor stuff. Again, it's sort of complementary. It's slightly different, um, and just have as large a soft box as possible as you can get in a room or whatever. Um, soften it just so the shadows aren't too hard you know I'm not a flash photographer but for certain things you know I will definitely use it for a medium format indoor portrait you know the vast majority aren't that, that are indoors they're very candid photographs so sometimes there's a bit of movement sometimes that doesn't bother me in the least bit you know most of the time they're not most of the time they're pin sharp but um, just for the more contrived ones where you got that latitude to be able to compose things a little bit again 
is it your kids you're thinking about family yeah I, I don't know um but you there are times when you can control things a little bit more contrive things a little bit more um you know i i shot hasselblad film just because as, as i said uh, digital was quite new at that time um and i used a large softbox and just got some lovely yeah some lovely sort of more classic kind of images um that i was very keen to have also um and yeah and i would also say by the way you know as the photographer <laughs> in the family the vast majority of photographs were taken by myself so guess what i'm not in the image <laughs> So, uh, you know, where you're photographing something other than the child or the children, um, you know, the mother, great. Okay, good idea to have a self-timer or something for, for those classical photographs or something um, because you're not going to be in there and that's a real shame. You know, you want to be in there as well for the family type setups. So, again, you know, play it by ear do what you can with what you've got um i mean i'm just looking through the, you know obviously birthdays but that goes without saying um i mean there's just all sorts absolutely all sorts and i wouldn't say that you know some of her just doing some really <laughs> funny things you know amazingly funny things um but I wouldn't I wouldn't be precious about it I um, I mean I stepped out one morning with the Hasselblad and she's going to nursery and she's in the back car and I was driving a Saab at the time and it's just a lovely photograph of her in her chair looking out through the window and you know it's not uh, yeah it, there's no set one or at least i didn't employ one set procedure um i i you know i i didn't really think about it other than to have the camera with me which i do anyway so that was no big deal or didn't require much more effort but um yeah go with it um you know there comes a time when i can't remember what age but she, you know she doesn't want to have a photograph taken and so you kind of have to respect that a little bit you know the i do remember it crossed over at this point where i was almost saying do this do that and against her wishes really and then i thought uh you know i've got to pull back now i've that's kind of you know it's run its course a little bit the last thing you want is to kind of be um you know f i remember seeing a peter sellers thing it was a documentary and he used to put his children on a some kind of a pedestal and make them act or something and i kind of thought that's a something a bit disturbing about that you know I, and I and that was and that came into my mind you know when she got that sort of autonomy and she was you know I'm not talking about just once or something I'm talking when it happens regularly then it's like uh, okay yeah she's now moving on she's got her own mind she's got her own wishes and so you've got to pull back and just say okay that's enough that's um do you, do you know what I mean? Just that's what I mean by playing it by ear. You get a good, I don't know, 10, 11 years, and it's a dream and it's just a joy to do. Um, but I think there comes a time when they kind of go, yeah, you know, not this isn't fun anymore or whatever. And then that's the time to, you know, um, but yeah, I'm just, I did a, I did, I had a monochrome for a while so i did take i you know i wanted some black i definitely wanted some black and white in there just to measure up not not to measure up just to 
mix it up a little bit. I love that idea of color and predominantly color when it comes to the family um, and and some black and white, some nice classic black and white. Um, you know, if it's a commercial thing, then I just would say, yeah, rangefinder, great. Um, if it's indoor stuff you're doing, you know, I've seen all sorts of family stuff, commercial family stuff. Some a bit average and some extraordinary. I, I knew a woman who worked in London and she did extraordinary stuff. I mean, unbelievable stuff, but it was, you know, it was commissioned. It was probably quite expensive to have her do that, but she did astonishing stuff. I mean, really astonishing. But there would be this thing you could see that they, she'd obviously um, conversed with the parents and it was, it was like styled stuff. It was indoors, outdoors, but it was more posed and clothes you know just the right kind of clothes and just a certain kind of lighting so it yeah it, it was a million miles although it was brilliant it was a million miles from what i would ever want to do um just because i like the essence of something whether it's street photography or, or you know family stuff i i like the majority to be natural i like you know, there are times where there are portraits and those are more contrived, obviously. But that's okay. But the essence has to be the essence. The essence has to be natural and that wonderful thing that you get. Um, so, yeah, I mean, other than that, I can't really... I can't really say too much. Um, definitely get on their eye level when they're, when they're small. Um, you know... I've got some right on the floor and you know reading a book or something and you know that sort of intrigue even though when they're really young and they're looking through a book and you can see that sort of fascination that they're seeing these pictures you know way before they can read even there's something going on and you just it's like a it's like a miracle. I mean, it is a miracle. It's just incredible. Um, you know, and then you get all that stuff where they say a new word. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a wonder. I mean, it's an absolute incredible thing. Um, yeah. Um, You know, I don't know, blowing bubbles, running, that laughter that they have, that uncontrollable laughter. It's just all incredible. Um, and just, yeah, well, yeah, yeah I, I can't show you photographs because, you know, I, I don't do that. I don't put, I don't put um, family on, you know, on the internet. Um, it's just a thing of mine. Um, I don't mind because I'm sitting here, but you know that's that's me that's my that's my call but yeah uh so but in a way it doesn't matter you don't need to see what i do or what i what i did you need to do what you do you need to be happy with what you do uh but i would say rangefinder yeah that would be my my weapon of choice every time yes i did i shot with other stuff i shot with all sorts of stuff um as i say i did some polaroids i did you know all sorts of stuff but the vast majority was rangefinder um with a great lens a fantastic lens because you only get this chance once you know and that was my thing i want it to be although i want it to be fun i want it to be chilled i want it to be laid back and the essence i wanted it to be very high or as high quality as i could make it yeah this is a special thing that's you you, you can't go back you know <laughs> you've got one chance so get it as good as you can but don't be precious about it just go with it anticipate and enjoy it you know um, there will be lots of failures don't worry about that just keep on shooting you know 
going to get the Christmas tree, just informal stuff sometimes, doing ballet, whatever, you know, just um, when she's looking a bit peeved or whatever, that can be fun, walking along a beach, whatever, just having a drink in Spain, um, they're kind of, I, I guess they're, they're nothing more than snaps in a way, they're very good quality snaps, I'll say that just because of the camera you know that's nothing about me that just that's the camera but um yeah i mean i don't know i don't know um you know i can't say whether these are great photographs or it doesn't in a way that doesn't matter that i'm happy with them and that's the main thing you have to be happy um you just have to shoot and be there be as um be be there as much as possible um i i uh, can't think of the phrase but there's a phrase but um yeah just be on hand with a camera i mean don't be pointing it all the time but there are little moments when you kind of see and you kind of you know are about to happen or are happening and you've got the camera with you and just you know yeah I don't know um, that's all I can say really um, yeah I hope that was helpful in some way um, and thanks very much for the suggestion and yeah have fun with it go with it cheers for now see you for the next one